Thank you. Our dear candidates, I'm so happy to have you for this lesson and uh, to take you through the correction of the previous lesson that the colleague took you through. And I hope you're ready. Your pencil, ready to mark. Look at the instruction. You learned the usage of already. The teacher told you already is used in affirmative sentence. Yes? And in case you're asked to use, uh, write it in a negative form, it means the word already must change to the word yet. Let's have a look at the answers. You had a simple question or instruction. Change the sentences to negative, interrogative, and to negative interrogative. A simple word. Mark the word interrogative. It looks to be weird to someone listening to the first time, for the first time, but the word interrogative means a sentence in a question form. Just like that. Then negative interrogative, you make that question a negative one. I know you have correct answers in your books. Click to number one. Jessica has already left for London. Jessica has already left for London. That's a positive statement. It's affirming. It's telling us that the action has already taken place. But our attention is on using already. Mark that already is used only in a positive sentence or affirmative sentence. What answer do we expect? Mm -hmm. Jessica has not yet left for London. Jessica has not yet left for London. Here, we don't exactly look at the meaning of the given sentence. Remember, it is saying Jessica has already left for London. Someone who is not taking it well may cling on the meaning. But here, we don't basically look at the meaning of that sentence. We look at the usage of the word already and yet. You may be on the actual ground telling us that, yeah, Jessica has already left for London. But if you want to put that in a negative meaning, you want to show that the action hasn't taken place yet, then you will say, Jessica has not yet left for London. That is a simple one. And this answer can also be put in a question form or an interrogative form. And this is devoid from the helping verb given or the tense of the sentence. If the sentence is post is the present tense, present perfect, then make your question also present perfect. If it is past perfect, then make your question, which is your answer, also a past perfect. Friends, let's have a look at the answer. Has Jessica left for London yet? That is it. I believe you have a take on that. If not, check yourself. Then the next answer can be, hasn't Jessica left for London yet? That is that. I know you're doing well. Look at instruction number two. Uh, we have it as the pupils of Global Junior School had already broken up for holidays. Mm? The pupils of Global Junior School had already, mark the word had. That tells us this in perfect tense, past had already. And we want to analyze the use of, the usage of already. Already is used in affirmative sentences only. Then if we are to use yet, then we must know that yet is only used in either, in any of the two ways. One, negative statements or in a question form that English calls it interrogative form. So, the answer is, uh-huh, the pupils of Global Junior School had not yet broken up for holidays. Like I told you, don't cling on the meaning of the other one, but learn that yet is used in a negative form. This will help you construct good or correct sentences at home there. I haven't got my food yet, mommy. I've got food already. Like that. So we had the negative answer as well. I mean, the, the, in a question form, had the pupils of Global Junior School broken up for holidays yet? Don't forget to put the question mark. It's a question. You're asking a person. You're asking somebody. You're asking some people. Had the pupils of Global Junior School broken up for holidays yet? We're asking for the far past. Had the pupils of Global Junior School 
not at the people's of Bromley Junior School broken up for holidays yet. Far past, near past, has. I don't want to talk more about that. But uh, let's look at the next number, my friends. The next answer. Hadn't the pupils of Global Junior School broken up for holidays yet? Like that. Just check yourself and mark yourself right. If it is wrong, then put the correction. It reads, hadn't the pupils of Global Junior School broken up for holidays yet? Like that. Expected question. The next question says, uh, you, you, you did it well, I believe. Mr. Mutono and his bride have already made their, vow, their marriage vows at the altar. This is amazing. Most people like to read this stage. We're saying Mr. Mutono and his bride have already made their vo marriage vows at the altar. Mark the king, the king, the king, the interest is upon had already, I mean, have already made. Especially positive idea given. We need to change that positivity to negative, and so we shall say, Mr. Mutono had and his bride have not yet made their marriage vows at the altar. I'm concerned about that word, have not yet. Why? In our sentence, that was the main tense given. It is present perfect. We don't need to change it to had. We only change it to had if it was we will maintain that had if it was given in the sentence. But here we have it as Mr. Mutono and his bride have already. So we shall say Mr. Mutono and his bride have not yet made their marriage vows at the altar. Just like that. We make this in a question form using the given helping verb. And so the answer will be have Mr. Mutono and his bride made their marriage vows at the altar yet? Just like that, as simple as that. Where you've seen a change, put it right. Next number, the next answer, in a negative form. Hadn't Mr. Mutono and his bride made their marriage vows at the altar yet? That's the answer we expect. Friends, let's have a look at the next number. You had a few numbers. The naughty boy had already dirtied his sportswear. <laughs> the naughty boy had already, this is past perfect. And so the answer is expected to be as that the naughty boy had not yet dated his sportswear. Naughty boy, meaning he's almost <laughs> making it, he's almost dating it. When we say like that, the naughty boy had not yet, by that time, he hadn't. He had not yet dated. What happened at the end? You know it better. But the key interest is on using the word yet and already. Let's make this in a question form. We shall say, had the naughty boy dated his sportswear yet? Like that. Then in a negative question, hadn't the naughty boy dated his sportswear yet? Like that. I know you're marking it right. Let's look at the next number. The next number was simple. Just a simple one. Just a simple one. The next number. Which next number do you see? <laughs> we are learning speeches. Speeches, yes, tell, tell yourself speeches. A new lesson has started. When you say speech, it comes from the word speech. What does it mean? You've always had assemblies at school. Different persons move in front to give his concern or her concern to you. And from the starting point of that person's talking to the end is what we're calling us a speech. We've always seen politicians gather people and they speak to them. The whole of it that they give to the community or to the, the audience is what we call a speech. But what does the word speech mean? English-wise, we have it as a speech is a formal talk given to an audience. A formal means an organized way, formal. Yeah, that is it. And the word speech comes from the word speak. You learned how to form. What did you form from verbs? <laughs> yes, you form verbs. Which ad, kind of verb is this? This is abstract noun. 
form from the verb speak. Abstract noun form from the verb speak. And what is that abstract noun? The word abstract means the name of that which exists but we cannot interact with physically. For example, I can say a broom. Then I handle a broom. I, I'm able to touch. I'm able to touch. So the word broom is a noun I can easily uh, interact with. But when I want an abstract noun, I want the name of that which exists, but I cannot interact with physically. An example, knowledge. You have knowledge, but can you pick knowledge and give me a hand? Oh. So that which exists and you can't interact with physically is known as an abstract noun. So a speech is an abstract. We can give you a speech. I can give you a speech, a talk on a given topic. At the end of it all, what do you carry back home in a bag? Do you carry something in a bag called a speech? No. What I've given you is abstract. So it is called an abstract noun. So we're saying the word speech is an abstract noun formed from the verb speak. Yeah. And by the way, we have two types of speeches that we always mm, talk about. In class, we teach you which speeches are these. You have some few ideas about it. We have direct speech and indirect speech. Direct speech and indirect speech. And for this case, we're going to pick one and we look at for a brief start. And so what exactly? Are we picking? We're picking direct speech. What do we consider inside the package of direct speech? Yes? Especially, we need to look at what it means. What do we refer to? Direct speech refers to the actual words of the speaker. The speaker may give these statements and we carry that the way it is. Are you getting that? Then we report. Yes. Let's say, for example, I can give out my mind. I love to teach so much. Mark those words. I love to teach so much. Those are my words. So you would wish to report that which I've just said. Those that I've just said. So you will carry those ones. But what will help you carry them? We shall learn from the bank sessions. Fine. We need to understand that a sentence in a direct speech has two parts. Yes, like I told you, I have given my speech. You want to carry it and report to somebody. You must carry this that I've said, and yet you must also carry some part of yours. We shall call that part of yours as the speech tag. Yes, then that which I've just said will be called as the actual words. We shall get to know more about that. Don't so much, so much worry. I've said the speech tag. That's part one. Then the other part is called the actual words. Yes. Or you can say the exact words. Or the words said, the said words. Meanwhile, the speech tag can be the reporting words. But majorly we consider those two. So we're saying a sentence direct speech has two parts. We normally quote or put the actual words of the speaker in quotation. Yes. Quotation marks. I hope you understand what the quotation mark is. A quotation mark is developed from a, that symbol you call a comma. So we have the open quotation and the close quotation. Let's have a look at example of what I'm talking about. You can see in the bracket there, we have the open quotation and the close quotation, meaning when it reaches that part of reporting exactly what someone said, those words, the way they were said, or the way it is said, is carried and put inside the quotation. And remember, it is important to consider the nature of letters. How should your letters appear? Imagine you have now reported your statement. Jimmy said, then you open your quotation. Yes, as you open your quotation, have in mind that the first letter that will appear inside the open quotation must appear in capital letter. That's the beginning of someone's statement. Let's have this lesson flow. We shall uh, consider that 
punctuating this statement is a key thing. Like we're saying, punctuating direct speech sentences. We want to learn this in a simple way. What do we consider? Let's learn from example. We have that. Kato said, I am a Ugandan. Kato said, I am a Ugandan. Before we exactly punctuate this, we want to see these two parts. Which part is called so, and the other part is called so. Remember we said, direct speech has two parts. Speech tag and the action words, or the said word. So, have a look at the demarcations there. The colored blue, I mean the first part saying Kato said, is what we're referring to as speech tag. I am a Ugandan, is what we call as actual words. Here we have two people, by the way, presenting this. Speech tag is the one who is reporting, but someone, Kato exactly, Kato said, I am a Ugandan, assume that I am Kato. My, what I'm going to say is only, I am a Ugandan. Only that. So that which I've said, all those which I've just said, are the ones put in quotations. Like the way you've seen, then uh, we've started our answer, our statement with it, a speech tag, and actual word comes in. Then it is also accepted that you can start with the actual word, and the speech tag takes the other side. But remember that the two parts are separated with the help of a comma. Yes. And when you're placing this comma, get to know the best way to place it. Don't place a comma, then directly above it, you put your open quotation. No, you'll be marked wrong. That will be wrong placements of the punctuation marks. What we expect is, like the way it has been written, Look at the way they've given it. Look at the word. Kato said, there's a comma there. Then a slight distance given, just a space you can give from one word to another. A space you can give from one word to another. Then you give your open quotation. Then right inside it, you write the first letter. That first letter must appear in a capital letter. Yes. You're lucky that here we have a personal proper noun, I, which is ever in capital letter. Yeah, so I am a Ugandan. Then ensure that as you put the last uh, punctuation mark, remember it is an open statement, it calls for a full stop. So you put your full stop, then slightly outside above that full stop, you place your close quotation mark. It should not just be directly above the full stop, that punctuation mark. It might be even a full stop, an exclamation mark, a question mark, no matter what you have. But remember, don't put the open quotation, I mean the close quotation, right above the given function down there. You need to give a space that you can give from one word to another. Then you, okay, just a slight space that when you drop a line from the close quotation mark, to the bottom of line down there, you must your line must not touch the given function down there. I hope you're doing this well. And that is the key thing we are considering for now. Then we need to look at the, the next. What else do we consider in this aspect, dear friends? Look at example two. My mother is very beautiful, said Jane. Here we have started with it, the speech, I mean the actual words. Then the speech tag comes. But still, we have separated the two with the help of a comma. What if it was a question? We don't again put two punctuation marks here. If they said, like for example, how old is your mother? Who is speaking? Benjamin. How old is your mother? Asked Benjamin. Then, remember the last quotation mark there, is, punctuation mark there is a a question mark. So you shall just put a question mark, then close quotation, then you write the next word, Benjamin asked. And remember, after this, look at this, my mother is, uh, is very beautiful. Then after close quotation, the next letter that comes is in small letter. Look at the word said Jane. That S must appear in small letter. Why? It's following that. It must appear in small letter. 
And as simple as that. Then the last thing is a full stop. This full stop brings to an end everything you've talked about. That has been that. But still, let's group this as our speech tag and actual word. Can you drop that line and draw it? Which one is the speech tag? Of course, we have it as that. The first part, the mother is very beautiful, is our actual word. Then Jen said Jen is our speech tag. Friends, let's have a look at the next bit of punctuation into details. Punctuations in direct speech. Look at that. You've been asked to punctuate correctly. How old are you, Jane? The teacher asked. I don't know how you read this. How do we read that? Yes? Read as if there is no punctuation mark. How old are you, Jane? The teacher asked. In case you're asked to punctuate that, two things are going to do the first time. One, identify the nature of the sentence. You realize this is a direct speech. There is punctuate, the idea of speech tag and there is idea of actual words. Separate the two with the help of a comma. But if it is a question, then put a question mark at the end of the said words. Then you punctuate. Remember the first letter inside the open quotation must be in a capital letter. You're starting up someone's statement. And so we have the answer as, how old are you, Jane? How old are you, Jane? The teacher asked. Mark the first letter on the word how. Then the punctuation between you and Jane. That pause as you speak to, exp to express uh, the correctness of your sentence or your question. We shall say, how old are you, Jane? The teacher asked. As simple as that. My interest is on the question, I mean the question mark and the position of the Close quotation. It's not just directly above the quotation mark, I mean the question mark. It is slightly outside. Consider like using the umbrella. In case you're given an umbrella to use and you get hold on your umbrella, and unfortunately I can't, umbrella may be so big for me. Assuming this is my umbrella, I'm supposed to bring it down near me. And I use, in case it is raining, rain will drop and get slide away outside. But if I move this umbrella it away from here, I realize that the other edge of the umbrella is the one on my head, so that when it rains, of course rain drops will land on me. That is a poor way of using the umbrella. I want to borrow that knowledge and bring to our function of the reporter's speech here. When you place the last letter or the last function mark, as you close the, as put the close quotation mark, must not just be directly below the question mark, the function mark, the, the close quotation mark. It must be slightly, slightly outside. The letter or the function mark must be inside. Then the close quotation mark should be slightly outside. I trust Global Junior School. You must have understood what I'm talking about. Why don't pick clearly? We shall learn from the given examples there and keep copying for your better learning. Friends, next number says, Simon asked mother, are you sick? Simon asked mother, are you sick? Like I told you, the first thing you do is identify the speech tag. Which one looks like the speech tag? Can you say asked mother? No. We can. But when you look at this, Simon, are you sick? That's the question. Asked mother. We can see that. But before we go to that, we can also read us. Simon asked, mother, are you sick? Let's take that and see how do we punctuate that. Mother, are you sick? Who is being asked? Mother. Who is asking? Simon. And who is talking? Of course, you. Who is reporting right now? And so what do we expect? Of course, Simon is the name of a person. It must appear in calculator. That's the first thing. And it is a speech tag. It must be in the quotation mark. Remember, speech tags are never put in the quotation mark. Only the reported words are the ones you put in the quotation mark. So Simon asked, qualifies to be our speech tag. Then the two will be separated by the help of a comma. And so I expect the answer to be Simon asked, 
Mother, are you sick? There is a punctual mark there after the word mother. That pause calls for that punctual mark. So we shall have it as that. Simon asked, Mother, are you sick? As simple as that. We can also say, Mother. Let's, let's look at the next example. Our next example says, The thieves broke into my house and stole my money, said the man. Which one looks like our speech tab? It's the first thing we do, we identify. Speech tab. Mm -hmm. Of course, said the man. Said the man is our speech tag. Then we separate the two with the help of a comma straight away. If it is not a question, if it's not an exclamatory sentence, then it's just a statement. It calls for a full stop. But for this case, we don't need a full stop there, remember, because the statement is still continuing. We are still reporting. We shall say, the thieves broke into my house and stole my money. Those are the words calling for open quotation and close quotation. Those two marks. Look at how it must appear. The thieves broke into my house and stole my money, said the man. Open quotation. The first letter there must be a capital letter. Look at that letter T. The thieves broke into my house and stole my money. That's the end of the statement. But since we have other bit of the words to make the sentence come to an end, we don't need a full stop there. Yes, it is a complete statement. The thieves broke into my house and stole my money. We would expect a full stop there, but since we're reporting, other words are still remaining. So we close quotation with a comma inside. The comma is inside, not, not outside the quotation mark. Yes. Then we consider the answer to be like that. Remember, we are learning functions in direct speech. A simple task. That has been that. Look at the next number. The maid said, I do not eat mukene. That's what the maid said. Back you. Mukene is now an English word. Look at dictionary. Ninth edition. Look up the word mukene. You will find it there. We are blessed. Our words are big. English develops. That's how English grows. So, our English grows. That's how it, our English grows. So, look at that number. The maid said, I do not eat mukene. Which one is our speech tag? Of course, the maid said. Separate the two with the help of a comma, since it is just a statement. But if it, was, if it were a question, the maid asked, it would change also, the speech tag would also change. If it was a question, we would say, the maid asked, do I eat mukene? It could be that I brought mukene to the table, but the table was made, and on opening, mm, do I eat mukene? Who is talking? The maid. So we shall report. The maid asked. The maid wondered. Mm, if it is a wonder. The maid wondered. And we consider the tense. So for this case, I expect the answer to be, the maid said, I do not eat mukene. And punctuated the way you see. Friends, I trust that you understand this lesson. And you're getting the, the ethics of this punctuation. Tomorrow we shall a little go inside it. Uh, and I believe you have enjoyed the lesson. I expect you to download the work down there. And as, as expected, you, you do the punctuation. So I've given you some simple numbers there that I expect you to punctuate. Follow those examples. Remember, we can start a sentence with a speech tag and a question tag. I mean, uh, the actual words come. Or we can start with the actual words and the speech tag comes. I have said, when you start with the speech tag, just separate the two with a comma. But if you start with the actual words and it's a question, don't bring back the comma. Use the right function mark demanded by the nature of the sentence. I wish you the best. See you when you come back. I'm happy we're about to come back. The Lord is in control, like I always say. Bye.